So I'm just going to point out a few things today. Just one main thing about how to use a string trimmer, which I think will make it more effective and efficient, particularly in cutting tall grass or weeds. But then this can make a significant difference and improve how long your string lasts. It can save you some gas and it definitely can make a better cut. Stay tuned and I'll show you not only how, but why. If you look at the string tr trimmer, mine has two pieces of string, some have one. There's different types, but they're usually some sort of plastic nylon that are there. And they rotate around. Actually, the cutter's here, so they rotate this way. It's used to, and if the string gets too long, there's this sharp blade here that will cut the string to the right length so it doesn't hit here or keeps it safe. And they rotate at a certain speed, <coughs> say it's 1500 times a minute or something. The circumference here is a certain diameter and so whether the string is here at the outside of here or whether it's out here it still has to spin this full circle in the same amount of time which is quite a few times and even in a second. But because it's out here and having to travel much farther it actually has to travel faster and force is equal to mass times acceleration so this doesn't change its mass but the acceleration depending on how the gas is changes or it's, you can almost it's not true physics but say speed so it's traveling faster accelerating faster is actually going to accelerate more force which is a reason why you want to cut as much as you can at, at the very tip also by cutting near the tip it's going to wear down the tip and even at the more evenly. If you're cutting in closer, not only are you using a little less force, and it may not be significant, just for, for demonstration, it's not a good example, but if you're catching something that's really woody, and you're cutting through, and you cut it down lower, the string is going to bend around it, and that's going to cause more stress on the string. You can see that. As the string bends around it, it's going to might wrap around it, pull it in, tangle it up, but also it's going to weaken that string by causing it to bend as it hits it and forces it around. Whereas if it just hits the tip, the tip might wear a bit and fray off, but it's going to cut through its more force and it's less likely to bend. So two reasons why you really want to cut as much as possible, especially cutting really high thick grass or weeds and things that are woody as close to the edge as you can. Give a little demonstration. Before I get into the demonstration, I was editing the video that I've already shot and I wasn't totally happy with how I explained uh, about the cutting, why it's necessary to cut at the end of the, the twine or the string of your wheat trimmer. And Rather than using force, really what I want to talk about is momentum. And if momentum is, I don't want to geek out too much, but very quickly, momentum is the mass times the angular, in this case, that's going in the circular, angular velocity. And the mass of the string is not very significant, it's very small. And it's pretty well whether you measure just the length of it, short length or whatever, it's, it's not a big difference. But the velocity, or how fast it's going, is. And the angular velocity, as I was showing you earlier, how fast it has to travel, either it's very close to where the spool is, or whether it's out, it's still going to travel the same number of revolutions per minute or per second. Um, in the case of my trimmer, the still, it uh, travels at around 8,000 RPMs, close to full RPM, at full throttle rather. If you think of it, if the string is only one inch long, the radius, that would be the radius of a circle as it turns around, one inch string. And the circumference of a circle is two times the radius times pi, which is 3.14. Two times pi is, say, 6.2. If it's one inch, then the circumference is 6.2 units, whether it's centimeters or inches or feet or whatever, or miles. In my case, the maximum string length 
to the cutter with the safety guard on is 8 inches or 20 centimeters. And if I use 8 inches, well, 8 times 6.2 is 50 inches. So you go from 1 inch that it's got to travel around to make one revolution, uh, a, a 1 inch long string, the circumference has got to travel around. It's roughly just a little over 6 inches. But where it's 8 inches long, it's actually got to make a circumference of over 50, or approximately just under 50 inches, or 4 feet. It's got to go around. And it's going to do that number of revolutions and 8,000 of those in a minute. So it's a lot easier to take 8,000 revolutions if it's only going around 6 inches versus 8,000 if it's got to go around 4 feet or 8,000 times in a minute. <clears throat> and if you want to try a little experiment, just simply take your hand, you can do it with your finger or do it with your fist, and make a little circle like this and just count like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then just suddenly go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Try to make the same number of revolutions at the same time with a wider circle. And you'll see it takes number one, it takes a lot more energy. It's actually, and, and it's actually the other thing it's doing, it's developing more momentum. If you take the small circle and you have asked someone to carefully grab your hand, or if you try to catch it even with your own hand, as an example, you're just making a small circle with either your fist or finger, you can do it with just a finger or with something else, is, is one thing. Then go with a larger circle. Everything's the same, same hand, same configuration, whether it's a fist or open, but you know, do it the same in both ways. Do it the large. Then try to capture it with your own. It's going to be harder to capture, even to capture your own hand with a large circle if you're going the same speed that you were going at this speed to go the same round. That's all due to momentum. The same effect happens with a string trimmer. Now onto the demonstration. Unfortunately, my mic got muted, but as you can see, the, the selection or the area that I chose to t demonstrate, it's high in thistles, it's got alders, goldenrod, there's even some tiny little spruce and pine saplings, which actually I'm actually going to try and save. You'll see me cut above them. But the, it's all at least, uh, I would say, 18 inches high, or the majority of it, and very thick and woody. Perfect test. First test, I'm just plunging the string trimmer directly into the stuff. You can see that it starts to wrap around. And if, unfortunately, if the, you had heard the uh, sound, you could hear that the engine starts to uh, bog down slightly. And also, you'll notice that the cut is not very uh, smooth. It's pretty ragged. And in fact, i got to go over some of it. I'm just trimming above those spruce and pine that I found actually underneath the, the buried in the weeds there. Next, I'm actually will show you how I would normally cut with the string trimmer near the end of the string or the end of the twine, not alternating, just moving it back and forth. You can see that none of the weeds or grass or any of the, anything is clinging or wrapping around. I'm able to cut a nice and clean and I'm cutting just as fast if not faster because I don't have to stop every once in a while because everything's wrapped around the, the, the end of the spool. Final demonstration. Okay, the final demonstration here is just me against the pine, a 60 some year old man with a bad hip. I'm I've laid out about a 100 foot long strip along the side of my house here, and it's all about 8 to 10 inch high clover and grass. And I'm going to trim that, and as you'll see, I can do that in about 2 minutes and 2 seconds. And if I could walk faster, I'm sure I could. And as you'll see up here, I s to slow down and stop. That's because there's a garden hose that wasn't put away properly and I've got to be very careful going around that as I'm uh, doing the trimming. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate any comments you have. And if you like, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And uh, I'm all open to any critics or anyone who liked this. Anyway, this is Don. Until my next video. Take care.